Hi guys and welcome back. I got an awesome training aid for you today. It's called the Speed Trap and it's going to help you to consistently get divots in front of the golf ball. And that's a huge problem for almost all players at times. We play really good, hit some good shots, and then we chunk one and it dribbles forward a few feet or we hit one thin and it shoots way over the green. We just have a tough time getting that divot nice and clean and consistent like the pros are doing, getting those crisp, flush golf shots. So this is a great training aid. It's going to help you to do that. And it's called the Speed Trap. So this is a a very hard plastic. You can hit it with your golf club, it's not going to break. Um, you can hit it with a full swing, it's not going to break. And what you do is you set your golf ball in front of this. It allows the club to come down, miss the hard plastic, hit squarely with the golf ball, and you can see where your divot starts in relation to where you set up the speed trap. So all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go ahead and set this up to where it's lined up with my target. And you'll also notice that there are three different marks on here. There's one that says chipping, which is a white line. There's one that says pitching, which is a red line in the middle, and there's one that's full swing. So it's basically telling you as you come down, come back, um, we're gonna wanna hit a little bit closer with the ball, a little bit more descending. Now for full swing, where I like to put this is between the black and red lines. That's gonna give me plenty of room to come in nice and shallow, get forward shaffling, miss this hard plastic, hit the ball first, and then take my divot in front of the golf ball. So we should be seeing all of our divots when we set up here, we should be seeing all of our divots in front of that red line. If we start hitting divots behind that red line, we know we have a problem. If we start to hit this hard plastic piece, we know we have a problem. And in my experience, if we can get immediate feedback to see what we're doing, we're gonna improve a lot faster. So that's great. I got my speed trap set up here. I can see if I'm hitting behind it or in front of it, but what am I actually gonna change? What am I gonna work on to get that divot in front? And I'll give you a couple really good tips here. Number one is I gotta close this club face early. This is what we talk about in the top speed golf system in the move. And we're gonna take this left wrist and turn the club to my left wrist is a little bit bowed. So I'm basically closing down this club face in my swing. So just make a little half swing, stop when your club's about parallel with the ground. I'm gonna work on closing that face down. You'll notice how my right wrist is angled back. That's what's called extension. So that's what people talk about when they say I'm covering the golf ball. I'm gonna take that right wrist, turn it down, get a lot of forward shaft lean and hit that ball nice and crisp. So if I'm looking from this angle, I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna turn this wrist this way. And now it's very easy for me to come in with a lot of forward shaft lean and still have that face nice and square. If my wrist is cupped, so if we're, this would be bowed, face is down. If I have the face open, that's gonna be cupped. If I'm coming down and my wrist is cupped, now to square up the face, that face is wide open, I'm gonna to have to flip the club, get, lose my forward shaft lean, and kind of come over the top to really flip early to square up the face. So if I had my hands forward and I was in that position, look how open the face is. It's that rolling, rolling of the wrist that's gonna square the face up. So I gotta roll that wrist, get this face turning down, and that's gonna allow me to square up the club face and release out in front. So that's the second piece of this. Our visual, our, our mind's eye has to be thinking about releasing that club in front of the golf ball. If I set up here and I'm making swings, I want that club to feel like it's releasing or you can see there's a big angle in my forearm and my club here. I'm gonna get that to release in front of the golf ball out here about 45 degrees in front. That's what we call the straight line release. Your hips, your shoulders, your arms, your club, everything's releasing out there. If I can do that and visualize that, now the golf ball is just getting in the way. My divot's naturally gonna be in front of the golf ball I'm not gonna have any trouble squaring that face up nice and consistent. So we've got that down. We got our two things to focus on. We're squaring the face early. We're releasing out in front. And now we got a great way to give us feedback with the speed trap. Let's go ahead and hit a couple shots and I'll show you the correct and incorrect ways. So I got my flight scope app open here. It's my radar. I'm gonna hit a seven iron and we're gonna see how far and how straight those go. So if I do this correctly, I'm gonna miss the plastic piece. I'm gonna hit the ball, and then you're gonna see my divot in front of that red line. So let's go ahead and try to get a good one here. Now, a little to the right, didn't hit it perfect, but look at my divot. It's in front of the red line, well in front of the red line, and I've come through nice and shallow. So let's see what my distance was on that one. We're looking at 171 carry distance, 99.3 miles per hour. So just a little bit to the right, but a dead straight shot. I got a pretty easy putt, maybe a 15 footer or something like that uh, coming up for my birdie putt. So that's really good. My divot was pretty nicely there. Let's go ahead and try another one out just so we can see it again. And we'll check our divot, make sure it's in front of that red line and make sure that I miss the, uh, the plastic piece so I'm not hitting behind it. And again, I'm trying to 
feel like I square that face up early to be able to do this. There you go, that one was dead straight. May hit it a touch thin, but again, missed the plastic piece. My divot just brushed the grass in front of there, so completely fine. And let's take a look at that one. That one was almost dead straight, 170 yards, again with the seven iron, 97 miles an hour clubhead speed. So two really consistent shots there. Now, one of the questions that I get a lot of times is, why wouldn't I want to just come down and hit this ball, the ground right by the ball and put it all the way up here by this plastic. So let's scoot it back here to where the pitching is or just in front of the pitching. Well, it makes a lot of sense. If I could come down, I could miss this plastic and I'm gonna hit this very close to the, the ball, scooting it back, wouldn't that make my margin for error smaller? And I would be even better of a ball striker if instead of putting the ball way up here, I scooted it closer and closer back to this hard plastic. Well, the problem with that is if I start to get this ball too close to the plastic, I'm not gonna come in nice and level with the ball. So ideally, I should have some forward shaft lean prior to impact. My club is, is coming down, my grip is forward, and as my grip starts to turn up, my club works level with the ground. We call this impact glide. So your club is gonna be gliding level with the ground for about five or six inches through contact. So now I'm missing this white, or this, uh, this plastic piece my club is very level with the ground and I can hit the ball anywhere in this area through here and I'm gonna have a pretty clean shot. If I scoot it back to here and try to miss the plastic, now my club is coming down on a very steep angle. I could even be coming over the top, chopping down on a very vertical angle of attack. I could be losing a lot of distance. I could be slicing the ball, getting a lot of things there happening that I don't wanna have happen. And you also lose a lot of margin for error. So, if we were to have this golf ball here, now I'm coming down much more descending blow, too steep. If I hit a little bit behind it, now it's the chunk, only a half inch behind it. When I'm flat, I can hit a little bit behind it and it's just gonna glide right on through because it's so level with the ground. If I come down steep and I hit on the ball first, a little too far on the ball, now I get that thin shot. So when I'm coming down steeper, then I'm really gonna have trouble with consistency. So I don't want you to put this all the way back by this plastic piece here. Let's go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna go ahead and try to chop down on one a little bit more steeply, and let's see how much distance we get and how straight that ball goes when I try that out. There, so I tried to miss the plastic piece. I still actually hit it a little bit. You know, not a bad shot. It probably doesn't look all that bad, but look how deep my divot is. I mean, you could bury a squirrel in that divot. That thing's huge. And you're losing a lot of compression on the ball. You're seeing that my my divot started way back here by this white line. So even though I hit the ball first, I've made some good contact with the ball. Let's see what my distance was. It went down to 158 carry distance. So not only am I swinging a little bit slower because now I'm kind of rerouting this club coming down this way instead of letting that take off, I'm chopping down into it and losing some distance there too. So I went from 170 and 171 to 158. Even though I'm hitting the ball first, even though I'm taking the divot in front of the ball, it was just too steep and you're gonna see it really thick and heavy divot there. So when you're working with this speed trap, what you wanna feel or what you wanna look for is a really thin, almost like you took a razor blade and just sliced off a piece of turf. And you're just gonna see the roots are just taken off like we did in the first one. And it's gonna be about the size of a dollar bill. If the grass is very hard, it's dry outside, you're not gonna have a really big dollar bill size divot. You're gonna have a smaller, thinner one like we did today. Or if it's really wet outside, you may see a little bit bigger of a divot. So lastly, one of the other cool things with the speed trap that I like a lot is we can work on coming a bit more from the inside for those of you who struggle getting steeper over the top. I'm just gonna set up these little red foam pieces, one on the inside and then one on the outside. And now we're gonna see that that's creating a little bit of a, a guide for me to swing a little bit more out to the right. Just a little bit, I don't wanna overdo that. But now I can see there's a clear path for me to come a bit more to the inside. If you're gonna do that, just go ahead and set the ball a little bit more up toward the toe side. And this is what I would do if I was gonna work on a bit more of a draw. So again, my first shots were pretty straight, not very much curvature on them at all. We'll see if we can draw this one a little bit more and get a nice clean divot in front of the golf ball like the first few. There we go, so that one drew a little bit more. Nice clean divot in front of the golf ball. That was probably a five or 10 yard draw. I'm trying to really exaggerate it there, come through that path. And now we'll look at the distance, 175. I actually picked up a little bit of 
compression on there because I turned that club over, got a little bit more distance. So that helps with the draw. If we wanted to come down and make it square, we just put all four of them on. So I put that one there, I put one here, and now we have a nice square shot coming through and we can practice that hitting, hitting square shots. So for those of you who want a little bit of visual feedback as you practice, that would really help out with this. I'm not sure if this will pick up with my flight scope because all these red things may get in the way and kind of confuse it a bit. Let's go ahead and try it out. Yeah, a little bit thin there. Not my best swing, but dead straight. Didn't hit the plastic piece. And that one was, it's gonna read here. 165 carry distance, so just a little bit thin on that one. So the speed trap, really cool device, helps me with getting clean contact, working on a draw, working to hit the ball, the divot in front, making sure those divots are nice and thin. So a really great training aid, and I'll be using this with a lot of my students. All right guys, hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an awesome bonus for you. We all want lots of lag in our golf swing. It's so crucial to have tons of lag to be able to get that high club head speed and to be able to drive it past your friends. I'm gonna play a preview from one of my most important golf lag videos. If you're on a desktop device, you can go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen. If you're on a phone or a tablet, you go ahead and click the I card and you're gonna get instant access to that video. Plus, you're gonna get instant access to five videos from our top speed golf system. Good luck to you guys. Go out there and rip the ball. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I wanna have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not gonna set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.